The first scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Psalm, the 23rd chapter. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
The second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came. They may have life and have it abundantly. There is one announcement that did not make the bullet, and that is that the winter did some damage to a lot of the shrubs and bushes around the church. So Building and Grounds is going to have a, a trimming and cleaning uh, party somewhere the, sometime during the week of the 15th. So if you're able to help, uh, speak to Steve Franco or to myself, and we'll try and schedule a time when we can get our clippers together and our shovels and clean up the church grounds a little bit. Join me in prayer. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Barbara's aunt Adeline and her husband Warren lived in a retirement community down in Lakewood, New Jersey. For security purposes, it was a gated community. Visitors had to pull up to the guard gate and be checked in. If your name was on their list, the gate went up. If your name was not on the list, they'd call the resident you said you were going to visit, and if they answered, the gate went up. If they did not answer the phone or were out or doing something else, you did not get in. Two things always amused me about this gated community. The first was there must have been a thousand other ways to get into the community because there's no other fences besides the gate. Second, while they cared who got in, they didn't care who left. You could just go out without being checked out or being observed in any way. The lesson from the Gospel of John that Nancy read to us this morning has Jesus talking about the sheepfold, a gated community, if ever there was one. Sheepfolds were secure enclosures used by shepherds to contain and safeguard their flocks, usually at night. They were sometimes made out of stone. Sometimes they were thorn bushes that had been planted in a circle. Sometimes it was just sticks pushed into the ground. When they were available, they gave the shepherd a chance to get a pretty good night's sleep because there were other flocks and other shepherds gathered there and they could take turns keeping watch. In the morning, it was time to take the sheep out of the fold for water and food. And that wasn't always an easy task. Sheep are vulnerable creatures, and they know it. They know when they're safe, and they know when they're exposed to danger. Recently, a writer who raises sheep wrote this on his blog. With our new fencing done, I started letting she the sheep out into the big pasture again about a month ago. However, it's a bit more involved than just letting them out. 
Our big pasture with all that good grass is across the creek that runs through the middle of our farm. The sheep don't like to go out there early in the morning or by themselves. After all, coyotes may be out there. So letting them out means calling and calling the sheep until one of them takes the lead and starts heading out from their small, safe paddock next to the barn. Then they all follow the leader. This writing might have been, writer might have been writing in Jesus' day, for it was common to see a shepherd and to see a, a flock of sheep, to see them on a hill or in the sheepfold. And I think John, that Jesus was also recalling as he spoke the 23rd Psalm. He understood its message and its imagery. The Lord is my shepherd, the psalmist writes. The sheep are led to green pastures and flowing water, which, if you think about it, were rare in Israel of that day and in this day. The soil there is often rocky and dry, lots of hills and mountains, and water, water is scarce. The shepherd in the psalm leads the sheep to the right path. I saw a film a little while ago about Israel and Palestine today, and as they did in, those, in Jesus' time, the shepherds still lead sheep out into the hills to be fed. And those hills are brown. And those hills, at least in this uh, representation, were scored by parallel ancient paths on which the sheep would walk. The paths were almost equally apart from each other as they stepped down each hill. Wide enough for a sheep to turn it to the right and graze and to the left to graze without bumping at the head of the sheep on the other path. From a distance, it was hard to imagine what possibly the sheep could be eating. It just looked like brown soil with rocks. But there was just some small green plants that a closer examination revealed. They would push their way up from that thin soil and the sheep would find enough to sustain it. But it was not easy, and it was not without cost to the sheep. Later in Psalm 23, we read, you anoint my head with oil. And that's possibly a reference to the oil that every shepherd carried. Because the nose of a sheep or the lips would become bruised, abrased, even cut, as it tried to get into those small, tender green shoots among the sharp rocks. The oil was a way of soothing the pain and promoting healing. And in the film, you could hear the voices of the shepherds continually talking to the sheep, calling them, keeping them on the right path, encouraging them to move on. And the voices almost had a musical quality as they just echoed among the hills. And it's from those voices that the sheep knew that they were being guided and protected. Jesus, as I've said before, was a master at telling stories and offering parables. He knew that many of his listeners would gain understanding from a story which was drawn from an image of everyday life. They draw good lessons from an example that they could remember. That's one of the ironies of this particular story, that halfway through, the disciples say, we don't know what you're talking about. You talk about dumb sheep. They just didn't get it. But then he repeats it. And it's a story that helps provide an image of the community of faith, the faith community we today call the church. For us, Jesus is the gate to our faith community. It's his voice which invites. It's his voice that calls us in. And that voice comes in so many different forms. 
Some hear Jesus' invitation from the lips of others in the faith community. And that's why we're called to, to share the stories of Jesus and to share how Jesus has touched and changed our lives. Some may hear the voice of Jesus as it's found in the Bible, as they read God's word and as they hear the truth of its messages and how that truth touches their hearts. Some may hear the voice of Jesus in a desperate prayer which is offered during times of pain or sorrow or tragedy. And some may hear the voice of Jesus when deeply moved by the beauty and power and wonder of God's world and God's creation. Some may hear the voice of Jesus when they look at a painting, a photograph, something created by an artist. This community of faith in which we've been invited and which, to which we invite can and should be a safe place, a place where those who enter can feel accepted, a place where those who enter can worship, a place where those who enter can grow in knowledge and understanding and trust. However, the church is not a gated community which keeps some out while letting others in. The gate is always open. It's the place where anyone can go out and come in. Jesus says, I am the gate, the place where God's people can find pasture. Now, sheep that stay within the sheepfold will eventually need water and exhaust any food that's there. In order for them to live and thrive, they need to go out of the sheepfold. They need to find abundant life. And Jesus says, this is my purpose for you, not only to invite you in, but to send you out. I came, Jesus said, that they may have life and have it abundantly. The voice of Jesus calls us in and calls, sends us out into the world. It's a calming voice, it's a steady voice, it's a reassuring voice, sometimes it's an urgent voice. And it tells us that we don't go into the world by ourselves, but that Jesus walks there like the shepherd with us, encouraging us to move on. So we're called to be a community of faith. And we're also called to be part of the world which is our home, the world where, is where we live out our faith, the world where we fulfill our calling to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the imprisoned or those confined to their homes, care for the sick in body, mind, and spirit, and share, share the good news of Jesus Christ. Together, we hear the voice of Jesus. Will we follow? Will we listen? Amen.